but you've changed up the track with this, haven't you? It's changed up the track to, to the, the usual stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it feels like the natural progression for us, but then that's because me and Beckham always sort of knew what the progression was going to be <laughs> from ages ago, like from years, from when, when we first started, we knew that we'd eventually turn into like weird, creepy synth. Weird stuff, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's different. There's no guitars on it, which is probably the first t- thing we've released that isn't like a remix um, with no guitars on it. Um, there's no like acoustic drums. Um, so yeah, it's a bit different. It's creepy as fuck. Um, you should just play it in the podcast, man. Just put it on here. I'm just playing it now. <laughs> if, I clap, if I clap my hands, you just put it in it. I hate talking about music. I, like, I, I wish people would just listen to it. You know what I mean? Dude, if you don't want Becca showing to you, I don't want Becca showing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a snippet here. If I, I clap mean, my hands, can you put I a mean, here? if you clap your hands, we'll put a snippet of the video here and the uh, audio. <laughs> Take a guess at how I'm feeling I don't know you anymore Is this is true to fuck it up this way Give me the sharp and jaded um, That was hey good. Yeah, it has <laughs> to that, spoken. guys. <laughs> to be fair i'm not exactly entirely surprised that there's no guitars in this track because i remember a conversation about eight years ago and you're going I fucking hate playing guitar <laughs> oh i fucking hate guitar man guitar is like my most hated instrument um <laughs> it, it sucks like i just think um you're so you're so stuck in a way with guitar like you're so stuck in like a kind of there's only a, there's only a small variety of sounds you can get from it, and when you have a guitar on a track, that track then becomes that genre. You know what I mean? It's either it's it's a flavor of rock. With you know, if you're playing a power chord, then you've got it becomes a rock track, and I just I just never liked how kind of limited it was. Um, so as we've kind of progressed, more guitar lines have been replaced with synth lines and you know stuff like that. And and now I don't even play a chord in the whole set. I don't think I just all just single notes and shit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I hate it. Which is really weird. I've, I've had a very guitar-y week this week. Fender gave us some guitars, and I'm like, I've got like, I'm doing a session with this girl Tally Spear, who's brought a really nice Epiphone round, like a semi-hollow Epiphone. It's, it's at mine now, so I'm surrounded by like really nice guitars this week. So I'm kind of feeling quite positive about guitars. Actually, I've changed my tune a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's because I'm in like guitar world. Um, but yeah, so yeah, this this track's like no guitars on it. Um, it's all synths. It's the first track that's produced by me as well. Um, Pete Miles did some mixing and some additional production stuff to like give it that like anime like flair because no anime track really sounds like anime until Pete's had a mess about with it. Um, but yeah, it's first track was produced by me. It's all done in my bedroom, like right there on the on the world's tiniest keyboard. Um, which I think is why it's not gone into the rock world because I was like, well, we don't want to go in the studio anytime soon. Lockdown was happening. So it kind of forced me to like write a synthy track. You know what I mean? Yeah. And limitations are good, right? Limitations are good for you. That's 100%. why I like, yeah, that's why I never agree with Matt Pearson owning like every synth on the planet. <laughs> I have so many options. <laughs> two synths. Yeah. Three I think limitation is good. Like I think I think being like, well, not that I did it intentionally, but like you know, saying, well, you're not going to go to the studio for this. You're not going to be in the same room as Becca for any of this. Now make a track, and this is what came out. Um, I think it's I think it's cool. It's interesting. It's it's something that we wouldn't have done before. It would have been so easy for us to just write another like human or not enough. Like it would have been so easy to just do another guitar-y track. But I'm kind of fucking bored of it. Don't tell anyone. But I'm kind of bored of that <laughs> shit now. So so is Becca. Um, so yeah. But bands I love always change it up anyway. So like that's what I like about them. It's like that record's good because it happened on that record and not the five records after it. Yeah. That's also the reason why people hate bands, right? Yeah. Some people sure, hate bands change changing. Yeah. Yeah. It's or weird. That's always that's always bugged me that like if someone releases an album that you don't like and you call them like sellouts or whatever, you say they're shit or you know, this band's dead to me because they're not singing about like, you know, all the emo stuff that I like. Well, the other fucking albums still exist. That's how it works. Like, you don't, they don't bring out a new album and delete the old one. Like, just go listen to yeah. the old album and fuck off. Go find some other True. Band. Yeah, it's growth as a musician. I think that's the, the beautiful thing about music because it's ever changing. The people who've created music already are not going to produce the same thing. Because as we mentioned in the previous conversation we've had this week, it's not fulfilling. Like, soul wise, mm. you need to have that some sort of thing that, that solves what you're looking for rather than what other people are looking for. 
yeah definitely definitely and it, and it's and it's it's the worst when that kind of unfulfillment thing hits you in the middle of an album <laughs> which happens to us <laughs> like <laughs> at the end of the album was like oh we fucking hate some of these songs man um so by the time they're out you're on to the next thing you know yeah. we there are some songs that we've never played live and becca won't play them so they'll never be played live because she's sort of gone off the song since the album's been released which is just what <laughs> happens i think um yeah yeah, it's Bro, um, yeah. Has, we've not even spoke about like your albums out last time you were on this podcast. Your album yeah. wasn't even out. I know. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Got an album uh, out, mate. Yeah. Called 45. Go get it. <laughs> yeah, Matt's got it. Actually, I've already done that. Let me just show the vinyl and then I'll probably look, be a bit more unique. So every time I mention it, I'll bring up a different part of the fucking vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> have a fucking inserts out in a minute as well. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. Love it. It looks like a Pokeball. Yeah, it does. I, I didn't want to say that, but it does. Can't it does look like, yeah, in the, in the like, mock-ups they gave us, it was meant to be gold and white. I was like, oh, yeah, gold and white. That's fucking sick, man. That's some, that's some Jay-Z shit. Gold vinyl, that's what I want. <laughs> and then it came, they're like, yeah, hey, hey, how's this? <laughs> it's like orange and white. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. Close enough, I guess. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, right. You, next, you time. Kind of, um... next time. You can kind of see the progression, though, especially from your last album to the to like obviously this new single that you've coming out. Like it's you can kind of see that transition period though, compared to obviously going back to your older stuff. What was what was one of the first ones you released? Was it into the uh, into the ether? Into the ether was one of the first. Yeah, yeah. man. So if you listen to that and then listen to this new track, it's like fuck. <laughs> it's weird, man. Yeah. It is weird. We we contemplated with. Um, I probably shouldn't say this either, but fuck it. We're doing one of those like live stream gigs um that everyone's doing in corona times that's getting announced on friday as well but, um and uh, we contemplated for that because it's like a bit special right it's you know yeah. it's, it's a live stream gig during a pandemic and shit um we we contemplated playing some old songs in that and uh we listened back to them and it was just like fucking hell this is like a different band i'd have to relearn this shit i was trying to learn some of our old songs and i was like i used to be fucking sick of guitar <laughs> man i used to play like <laughs> mental stuff yeah the band and, uh, riffs. I've got no idea how to play them now. I couldn't play; it would be impossible. Um, would you Would you consider like maybe like doing a remix of those songs, like in the sort of style you're at now, and seeing how that went? Maybe I've thought about it. Yeah, me and Becca joke about it sometimes that we want to go and like re-record them, <laughs> or some of them like pick some and like record it now. Because Becca's voice is like astronomically different now. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I think because back then, when you when you're when you're younger and you're just you're trying to you know you're in a band you just want to be like the loudest and you want to hit the highest notes and you want to play the most complicated guitar parts like you just try so fucking hard and i think we were both doing that like i think she was you know doing her best like belty voice um she's got a fucking powerful voice and she was just going for it and it's every song was just like Aah! like as high as she could get but now she's got so much character and like nuance and fucking like a different kind of power behind her voice and like it's crazy how much better and different she is um, as a singer so i i would love to just hear her voice differently like sing them now but then also they're shit songs like they're not good <laughs> like we wouldn't like want to re-record them's fine but like i'd want to rewrite them like and, and yeah and not make crap but um yeah i don't know it's weird it feels weird the idea of doing it is odd but i wouldn't be against it we thought we thought about playing some live we, we still might um maybe not at this show but at, like a future one um because it'd be interesting to see and like the thing is as much as we hate them and want to pretend like they don't exist they are some of our most streamed songs like i think i haven't checked in a while but i think our like second or third most streamed song is off of our first dp ever and it's the song we hate the most um but you've got a you got a I, th I think anyway becca might disagree but i think you have to kind of honor that a little bit you know if, it's, if a song yeah. has got a million streams doesn't matter how much you hate it people like it so just shut up and play it um so yeah we've got to find a balance there somewhere something that we want to play that people like but doesn't want to make us like gouge our own eyes out you know yeah two million <laughs> listens you have on that uh two video. now yeah that you nice. just mentioned <laughs> so it's crazy crazy Bad. curveball i was just uh really mentioned obviously about vocalists like changing over time on the char characteristics of the voice changing mm. i think a good example of that is john from the main if you listen to the first album and then listen to the album that's just come out like yeah man i thought they changed room. singers I had, yeah i had to google it yeah yeah i thought they changed singers because i i like i like both styles but i was like oh this is a new singer and i read the same guy yeah that's crazy envy on the coast as well yeah. envy on the coast one of my favorite fucking bands ever that my uh low country is probably my favorite album ever and um it sounds like four different singers 
Like every release they do is just different. It's crazy. The band as well, like the whole, even the music style changes. Like Low Country is this weird, like swampy blues stuff, and then their, their older, their older stuff is like proper emo rock. Um, yeah, they're worth checking out. That's cool. Has the recording process been different because of lockdown? For the- <laughs> well, we haven't been in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> we did it in our bedrooms. <laughs> me yeah, me and Becca you- haven't haven't written in the same room for like I don't know, like four years, probably five years, yeah. maybe longer. Um, so we do everything separately. We do everything over Splice. So Splice is Splice is two things. And actually, I want to come back to Splice because uh, yeah. I've got a funny story. So Splice is two things. One thing it does is um, it, you can share projects on there, so like Ableton and Logic projects. So we use that. So we chuck a Logic project on there and then Becca can download it at her end and it's, you know, whatever, and record her vocals. So we've done it all like that. So we've actually not even been in contact this whole time and the song's done. Um, I, I produced it to a level that I was okay with and Becca records the vocals. And then when we sent it to Pete Miles to be like, we want to come to the studio and do this. Um, he basically was like, it already sounds good. And he's just going to like do some tweaks. And yeah, so all of Becca's, I think all of Becca's vocals are done in, the, in her bedroom. Most nice. of them are. Um, all the sounds are made in my bedroom and then it was all mixed in Pete's thing. So it's proper like weird. It's like a proper 2020 you know production because no one fucking came close to each other it's probably yeah, social distance production <laughs> yeah fucking crazy think think of the, like the usual um recording scenario where it's everyone in the room and it's like meant to be a creative environment or half of them have just nipped and one gone watching the telly or whatever it yeah. goes to the point where it's like everyone's in completely separate locations nowhere near each other yeah man. and that you still ended up with something that sounds amazing but yet no one's had contact it's just uh, yeah i've never had that like creative process in the studio thing but then i am a bit weird because we're a two-piece and the reason we're a two-piece is because i don't like playing with others like so <laughs> I've, I've, I've never had that like let's all sit in a room and write some shit well I've, we've done it like we well i mean you anyone that follows us knows the fucking story of like having to go to america and like write with all these people in rooms and stuff and then we hated it like fucking hated it um, so we've never had that. We've always been quite solitary and like we, Becca and I would normally like to go away and write stuff and then come back in. I think just because we don't want to hear other people's ideas, uh, <laughs> which is probably not the best way to be. But um, yeah. But if that's what works for you, then that's what works. For it works you. for us. Yeah, it works for us. I think that more was... people are going like that with, with how good technology is now and, and things, sample libraries like Splice. I think there's there's a lot more solitary writing going on um and you know with technology being a thing you know like simps i don't want fucking someone sitting there watching me write simps because they sound crap right up until they're finished like yeah. and you don't want anyone to hear that so yeah. i think yeah writing is becoming more of a solitary thing i think with it being like such a um a synthy track anyway it just makes sense for you to do it in your room becca's vocals sound good recorded in her room because you take that to a studio, even if you had like the fanciest fucking, you know, analog synths, it's the specific one you used on your computer that works well. So, yeah, I mean, we've done both. Like the synths on the album are probably, probably 50 50, like my digital synths and Pete Miles's analog stuff. Uh, so I find I see the benefit in both. But I do find that with when using analog stuff, you tend to settle a bit quicker. I think because, like, I don't know, maybe just because you're in the same room as people and you're on the clock and you're in the studio and you just kind of do something. It sounds good. You put it in. And I'm still happy with it. But, like, I think the digital stuff, you really can hone in on it. Yeah. And there's, there's nothing like, you know, spending a, spending a day on an 808 sound and then getting it perfect. And then you wake up the next day and it sounds like shit. Uh, oh, every, you know, and you have to completely. Track I make. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to delete it and then start again. But like, it's you know, it's part of it. I don't know. I think it's two different. It's two different beasts, and I'm more used to working on my own because we're a two piece. So yeah, throw it that way. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we had Pete Miles involved because I don't. I would never trust myself to put anything out without him. He's basically the third member of Anime, so I need I need him to like at least look at it, <laughs> at least tell me that it's okay, because yeah, he's he needs to be involved. But um, that comes from like years of working with him, and you know a lot of um, there's a lot of arguments in that time as well, and like you know he, he's hated me for a lot of it, I think. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you build up that like trust, I think, and I don't trust anyone else to to touch an Anime song um, than Pete now um but that's yeah that's important i think 